<laughs> uh, we're the sound project from the Netherlands. Maybe you've heard us play uh, at the Vesper service or in the morning service, the worship service. And uh, we were invited to do a workshop as well. Uh, let me introduce the guys on stage. Uh, these are the pictures. Just find your favorite one. Um, Arjen, Susanne and Miranda in Dutch. Uh, Ilko, that's me. Wilkin on the drums. Arend on guitar. Efron on bass. Helene on violin. And we're together for almost nine, ten years. And we had a really good time at the Vespa service yesterday afternoon. I don't know, uh, did anyone visit the Vespa service? Love you already. Yeah. And um, the readings were done by uh, Laura. And we were here seven, eight years ago. And then Laura was a worship apprentice. So it was really nice for us now having her leading the service uh, together with us. Um, well, the P workshop, what are we going to do? We'll just ask you uh, uh, the first question, because we want to know a little bit about you as well. If you are familiar or know or play uh, the Geneva Psalms, if you've got a mobile phone, you can... Uh, uh, oh, oh, wow. 15, 16. Go to menti.com. Is everybody hooked on or already? Wow. I still think that are a lot of people. The code, Ryan, do you know the code? Nine two seven four eight nine. It's not his pin code. Menti.com. We've got several questions for you. Ah! 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 Oh boy! Oh! Are there still people logging in or? Everybody's ready? Okay. Well, it's 50-50, more or less. Uh, that's more than I expected. Because it's a Dutch tradition to sing Geneva Psalms for ages. And some of them uh, moved uh, across the Atlantic. Uh, and uh, the old 100 is a favorite one or still familiar. But we really sing all 150 Geneva tunes still in the more traditional churches. Um, so, it's fun to see so many people know them, and then you are having lots of more fun during the workshop today. So, the other 55%, good luck. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you enjoy the music. Uh, the P workshop. It's about peace and not about peeing. Um, so, we start with praise, of course, and we end praise every day uh, about our preferences. People are such difficult uh, types to work with uh, in your ministry and a music ministry and they've all got these opinions and their own preferences. Uh, purpose, not in life, but of music today. Uh, the Psalter, of course, the Geneva Psalter, and we end with playing some psalms for you. Uh, so that's the program for today. Praise, well, let's start praising. Uh, with uh, uh, not a Genevan tune, but a Taizé tune. Who's familiar with Taizé tunes? You all know this one probably. It's in France, and many young people go there and just sing all day lovely songs, uh, quite simple or SATB settings, uh, all day long. Uh, I want to check, because we were very enthusiastic last time about your singing uh, abilities, uh, if you can sing this one, uh, multiple voices, as ATB, directly from scratch, but just sing it once, only the melody, with piano, and then I'll stop playing, and you just sing four voices. You can do that? Wow.
That's the way to do it. <laughs> um, it's an example of arranging a classic song for band. And um, my question for you is, uh, which one did you like most? The piano accompaniment with just melody singing, or your own multiple voice singing, or maybe the arrangement of the song project, or you, you like all equally. You don't have to please us, huh? You won't get a free CD at the end, but... <laughs> Last 10 seconds. This is um, like in your own church, right? We've got all these people, and they all have their own preferences. And, um, well, do we always need a band, uh, or always need SATB singing, or do we only need piano? And, and, uh, the problem is we've got all these people together, but it depends not on our personal taste, but more of uh, the, the purpose um, where making the music for. So I want to ask you several questions about your preferences and then we go to the purpose we're using them for. And this is a simple one. Uh, if there's an instrument you like best, just pick one. You can, uh, there's an, uh, an other... <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. That's funny. No other instruments? A favorite? The grand piano. I love these guys. Uh, violin, 80%. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, you can combine all these instruments and musical talents you've got in your congregation. Uh, I love Norma playing the organ. Uh, I love uh, playing the grand. I love playing Helene, uh, playing the violin. Uh, so you should uh, look into your congregation, which talents there are, uh, so you can use them for uh, the several uh, different types of music styles you are playing. So I'm asking you if there's a music style you prefer playing. Rock, pop rock, classical, jazz, contemporary Christian music worship, or uh, all of the above. It's not about coffee, it's about the music styles. Yeah. Country. That's funny. So if you've got people in your church and that love classical music, um, you should add some classical music in your liturgy. Maybe not by singing, but just uh, sneaky playing some uh, classical music into, into uh, uh, worship songs. Or uh, um, If you've got old people who just uh, love worship, then you're, yeah, well, playing a classical piece is uh, Parle voor de Zwijnen in Dutch, we say. How do you say it in English? Parle voor de Zwijnen, Parles voor de Zwijnen. Pearls for the... Oh, really? It's, it's the same. Okay. And the last one, uh, which church of style I've chosen for, a more traditional style, a house church. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're playing in the Calvin Chapel uh, this Sunday afternoon uh, in Woodlawn, CRC. But there are so many, of course, it's more like... Okay, so we're good here with our music probably, uh, because we're a mixture between the traditional and uh, a little bit kind of worship. Um, so we've got all these people with their preferences in our church from uh, 8 till 80, um, and they're a music director and you have to choose your songs for, for liturgy and what you're going to play and with whom you're going to play. But it's all about not our preferences, it's about the purpose you're writing the music or you're playing the music for. Um, already Nietzsche, not my favorite one, uh, but said, um, uh, without music, life would be a mistake. And um, we should talk about what purpose uh, can music uh, provide for us in our services. Uh, so I'm asking you, not especially for the service, but in general, what purpose does music serve? And you can choose three words if you want. And it, it makes a word cloud, so we can discover uh, what purpose you think uh, are the best. Just put in three words, one is uh, fine as well. There it goes. Just a few ones, I thought we were 48. Yeah, there we are. Wow. Ah, 49, 50. <laughs> 51. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, who who uh, typed in connection? 
Who can explain what you mean by connection? So through music, we can connect. Uh, worship is obvious, I think. It's connecting, connection a little bit the same as community, or who, who uh, has typed in community? Yeah? It connects community. Uh, theologic, uh, theolog theology, yeah, don't know much about. Uh, praise is a, a little bit praise and worship, so you s sometimes see the same words. Uh, but it's about community, worship, and connection, and uh, about praise and theology. That's fun. Uh, if you Google, there are 15 purposes of music in general, and, and the first one is pleasure. But it's general, eh? and it's not theological, it's just general, it's pleasure. Music, pleasure for the musicians to play, and for listeners to enjoy music. Um, of course, to dance, for example. So you can dance because of music. Um, the Psalter um, is funny because John Calvin uh, wrote this in his foreword uh, to the Psalter. Give him pleasure, so the meaning, the purpose of the Psalter was of music is pleasure by John Calvin. Music either first or one of the principal uh, pleasure purposes. Uh, and we must think that it's a gift of God deputed for that purpose. So if you start a service and say, we're going to have some pleasure today, <laughs> it's a kind of holy pleasure, I think. But music is a, is a uh, way of en well, enjoying and experiencing pleasure. It's already uh, written in 1525. Uh, he was convinced that the congregation, the connection, um, ought to be singing, it's a community, so use singing to build a community and to educate theo theology, yeah, to educate people to learn scripture. They couldn't write, uh, they couldn't read, so it was a way of using music to touch the heart of people and to learn scripture. That was the purpose of John Calvin starting with this project. It was his psalm project. He didn't write any music, he didn't write any lyrics. It was his project to let people write lyrics let musicians make melodies, and let all the 150 psalms put on music so people can learn them um, in their own idiom. A little bit of musical background, collection of 124 melodies. Some melodies are used multiple times on several psalms. Uh, the church modes, every church mode you can find, uh, but most are major, minor, or Doric for the musicians among us. Uh, our ears now just listen to mostly major and minor tunes. So the songs we sing in the Netherlands, most of the Genevan Psalter, are the major and minor ones. Doric some, some. Uh, or if you're a jazz fan, of course you still listen to many church modes, uh, but m most pop songs and, and worship songs are in major or minor keys. Melody just simple, I think we can learn from that because we musicians think that people can sing everything, but be aware, uh, early morning, and uh, meal, meal, coming out of bed, and then oh, and all these women that think that we can sing uh, up high there, <laughs> gone is to, no community, no worship, no pleasure. I love every slide that says women singing then. Uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy, I have pleasure uh, uh, this morning in the service hearing women sing beautifully. But I like some lower. And only half and quarter notes. It's really simple. And it's, it's fun that we still sing them uh, uh, in the same way. 450 years, well, not quite the same way, but uh, uh, 450 years later on. And nothing has changed. Like music has stopped uh, in, in all those ages. Uh, this is one, for example, it's in the blue uh, hymnal. I'm going to play it for you. If you. I don't know if you can read it, the third verse. So, oh, so no, just take the ver uh, first one. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Can we sing that together? Three, four.
It's a really beautiful melody. It's, it's an awesome melody. But it's hard to, to play with a band. Um, so what we did is uh, we took a look at 450 years of music history, and we've got our musical P, the palette of tempo, time signature, rhythm changes, key changes, melody, harmony, uh, instruments we can choose off, not only the piano or not only the organ. Uh, and uh, we've got totally different musical forms. The, the Psalter has just verses, 10, 20, 4, 2, um, on every psalm. And most worship songs have a, uh, or pop songs have a chorus, first chorus form. Many popular, if you're going to start writing your own songs, start with an AABA form song. The, the most popular uh, songs for singing together are AABA songs. Uh, I think you know this one. Uh. It's A, A, and then you got a... B, and then you get a... A. And uh, is it this uh, familiar? Is it an English one? Yeah? Abba Father? This is the second A sentence. Then your B. B. And back to A. Many of songs you, you, you just uh, uh, Blader, turn the pages th through your uh, hymnal book and, and look for this type of, of uh, structure in your songs. They are the most favorite ones. And of course, we've got the first chorus, uh, endless repeating choruses and etc. Uh, so the project was about, is it possible to uh, turn Genevan tunes with this uh, musical palette we've got uh, into more contemporary songs to build a bridge between older generations that still know these tunes and younger generations playing in bands and who have left the traditional churches and are going to more evangelical, non-denominal uh, non churches and they don't play the psalms anymore. And that was for me heartbreaking because the psalms tells everything about our God's relation with us and how we can turn to Him in prayer and in what ways. So. We're going to play this one for you. And uh, what we did with this one is just took the first line. And this is because I can't sing it. So we did it. But that's just my failure of singing high notes. So it's n nothing great composing. It's just. And we use less chords. So we've got more of a fluid melody. And that's just it. And we wrote an, a, a chorus in it. Well, just listen to it, how it goes. It's quite easy. You can sing it. Uh, two, three, four. <laughs> Chords. 
That's just it. Two chords. Everybody can play. He alone is Lord of Lords. God of God's forevermore. He who from his throne on high formed the heavens, earth, and sky. For his mercies will endure. open for his endless love otherwise you should do this now the love's dead right so <laughs> and um, in the song there are several things coming together the purpose was uh, easy so people can sing along it was about the, uh, um, using a first chorus structure because in the psalm there is this sentence keep coming to you as a course itself, if you know Psalm 136 in, in the, I've got the Dutch version, what's the line of the chorus? For God's, for, for His mercy will endure, ever faithful, ever sure. So it's in the psalm itself already, and that's why we use the chorus, uh, first chorus structure. So the purpose was singing together, community building, easy to, uh, to play, you can just play it uh, with piano or just guitar. And uh, the only difficult part is the modulation in between. That's just for pleasure for us. Well, woo! Uh, <laughs> another song we're going to play, it's not Genevan, afterwards, but to uh, it's Psalm 1. It has a bad melody from the Genevan tune, but I love the psalm because it's the start of the book. It's the biggest book in the Bible, the psalm book. And uh, the first psalm, and you always read the first chapter of your book and the last chapter. So read Psalm 1 and read Psalm 150. And combine them and have a good uh, life, I guess. Because, uh, so we wanted to do Psalm 1, but it was just not such a good melody. So we went to this slide before. And, well, uh, okay, I've learned from Ilko I should use an AABA form so people can easily sing along. Okay. 
then make an AABA form. And it's a, a beautiful song, I think, about this psalm. And it should be uh, more reflecting. So no... Uh, that kind of stuff, but a little bit more... Psalm 1, so the purpose was uh, uh, a reflecting song, easy to sing along, an A-A-B-A form. Well, the first two succeeded, and if you've listened good enough, then you uh, uh, heard that it, uh, it's not an A-A-B-A form. It, it ended up with a first chorus. And people can easily sing the chorus along, so in my church, and if we've got a good singer, I would choose the verses to sing solo and the chorus together. But that's a choice you can make, make your own liturgy. Um, this is my word cloud for the purpose of psalms using in your liturgy. First of all, Kelvin, I think it's important is to educate people. Educate about God and 
uh, about your communication. God communicates with us through his psalms and how we may communicate with God in every situation of your life. With joy, sorrow, it's not about us, it's about him telling us how we can communicate with him and how he wants to communicate with him. And of course, the end of the book is Psalm 150, but in between there are a lot of other psalms as well. And we can use them in our growing with uh, uh, our relationship with the Father. It's about absolutely participation, participate, community, doing things together as musicians, singing together, uh, youth bands, encourage people uh, to make music together. It's just building communities, absolutely, and music, and, and don't forget the pleasure. It's, uh, it's so stupid. We, we tend to walk away from pleasure. No, embrace pleasure as a God-given gift. Uh, reflection, absolutely. Use instrumental music, for example, if you've got good instrumental players, or use songs uh, like the one we, uh, we did just, but the next one is even better, to reflect, to reflect. Um, and of course, we've got all the worship songs. So there's praise enough, that's no problem, and we've got psalms there as well. And last but not least, have pleasure making music together. This one is, of course, a famous one, Psalm 22. We play it in, in our Easter tour always. Um, it's, uh, my God, why have you left me? It's, it's, uh, it was a difficult one to arrange. I don't know if you're familiar with this melody. Um, I have to look it up in mind. Um, I really wanted to do this one because it's such a, a powerful psalm. Um, and I don't know what's your situation in your life, but there are always times that uh, you're, we are allowed to say, my God, why have you left me? It's no problem saying, my God, why have you left me? And the end of Psalm 22, if you read further, then it ends with joyful. And, and, but in between, you can cry to God if you're driving your car, sit in a train, or sit here on your hotel room. My God, why? I don't understand everything. And um, so I really wanted to do the psalm, but I found this a difficult one. So with my classical background, it, it, it became more of a classical, uh, well, not a Schubert song, but more of a a song in itself. So we're going to perform it. And, uh, the, the main trick was to change it to, I have to think, that you follow it. Just the end I changed a little bit. So it can go on back to the main key. And then more classical intro. Fitting the emotion of maybe feeling a little bit lonely and wondering why God has left you. i 
So you recognize the melody still. It's not a really a worship song. It's not like you enter the church on Sunday morning and say, well, I've got a psalm from the psalm project. We're going to sing together, Psalm 22. Uh, so if you've got a good singer in your church and piano player, uh, this is a wonderful psalm to do, to reflect people, let people reflect during Easter time, for example. So that's a different purpose than I'm going to play a, a little classical a psalm from the psalm project. No, the purpose is let people reflect and use this psalm uh, and educate. Uh, Psalm 62, that's my favorite. Uh, purpose wasn't singing to all together, uh, because you can't sing this one. But if you've got a, a, a nice band in your church, this is just for pleasure. And pleasure for the musicians. So we want just to play a, a, a fun psalm. It's always fun for us to play, but you can't sing it uh, with the congregation. So I don't know why we do it, just because it's fun. Uh, <laughs> And because I like Sting, uh, so it's, it's a little... <laughs> Sorry. It's also a beautiful melody, eh? Uh. that melodies anymore right so but we played a little bit different but you recognize the song so it's just to listen on CD on your know, outer, ra uh, outer radio or something like that <laughs> Bye. 
just fun, fun playing this one. Uh, and you still recognize the total melody of the Geneva tune. So thanks to John Kelvin, we can play uh, this tune in this kind of way. Um, it's written by, no, it's not here. The first, it's this uh, French composer. I don't know his uh, name. Does anyone even know? No, okay. Uh, Psalm 91, um, we wanted that one to sing together. So the purpose was, okay, make a song that fits the lyrics always. The purpose is to um, use music as a vessel for the lyrics to shine, right? It's not about and pleasure and pleasure. <laughs> um, so we wanted more like a, um, a rock uh, uh, kind of version uh, from this psalm or a more Celtic one. kept the melody just as it is. We changed the uh, time signature, more flowing because it's quite static. And um, we start with just the melody in a classical way and then we pump it up a little uh, to sing together. But you have to download the uh, lead sheets on our website to sing along. So we just play it for you uh, in a, a little lower key for our ladies and uh, those who dwell you 
it's, it's, it's totally the same. It's just in a 6 8 rhythm. It's, it's the same as it's on there from 450 years ago. Oh, uh, we left. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I escaped that one. Uh, so, and that's funny because you got a totally different musical feel to it. And you play the band, of course, with guitar, it's a, a different sound. But it's really the same song, this one. And uh, so people that are used to singing Genevan songs in the Netherlands recognize this song. But the younger people now play their own Genevan salt like this. And you can really do it with just guitar or just piano. If you've got Arendt, Arendt, Eagle, okay, you can build in an, an improvisation at the end, that's fun, but uh, you don't need it. No, you can just sing the song. <laughs> but, but we love it. But that's, that's his, his our pleasure. Uh, and not only by making music. Uh, the last one we're going to play for you, it's one Arian uh, did. It's uh, Genevan as well. It's a very famous uh, Genevan. Uh, we sing it a lot. Praise the Lord with joyful noises. And, uh, well, Arian, do you want to say anything about it? Just play and sing it? Okay. So we end with a P of praise. And, and then we can have some questions if you have one. So think of it during this song. Voice to you. 
He did a marvelous job on that one, only he made one mistake. That is, his purpose was to sing it by himself. So every male singer early Sunday morning would think, well, who invented this song? So you have to put it, if you're a musical director and you want to sing this song with the congregation, it's easy to do, but you have to put it down three or four uh, tones because it's, it's too high. But okay, yeah. Okay, that's, um, um, the, you can look at our website because the lead sheets are all free available. Um, and we don't have, of all the songs, English recordings. So you sometimes have to listen to the Dutch recording to listen how the song goes, maybe, on iTunes. Uh, and most of the English songs we have will be on the website uh, within a week. So there are still uh, several, but you can uh, look them up there. Are there any questions? <laughs> no, they, they, they say it's a worldwide organization already, so they've got Dutch rep representatives, yeah? Um, and, uh, well, uh, it was okay, but it's totally different. But I, if you ask me, I like the Tese version better. <laughs> <laughs> No, they, they, because no, I, I love young people singing uh, multiple voices in Tese, this, uh, the Tese songs. It's, it's uh, wonderful. Other questions? No one? Everybody hungry? Yes. yes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, well, maybe see you at the Vesper this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>